Africa, eh? Africa, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Africans, my people. Africa, my continent, oh. Africa, eh? Africa, ho, oh, oh, ho, ho. Africa, my continent. Make you listen to me, yo, yo. What is happening? What is going on? What is happening? What is going on? What is happening? Welcome to Youth Express, the voice of the youth on GTV. My name is Paola Benji Anum, and today we are discussing fatherhood. Father's Day is here, and we want to discuss fatherhood in all its forms, the joys and challenges accompanied with fatherhood. To help me with my discussion, I have a number of fathers in the studio who are in the audience and also two people as my panelists, as we always do. But before we start our conversation or any other thing, I want you to invite a friend to tune into GTV right now and join us. Let's watch Youth Express together. But before we do that, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Youth Express, the voice of the youth. Welcome. Welcome back from that short break. You're still watching Youth Express, the voice of the youth on GTV, and we're celebrating Father's Day today. And I have a number of people in the studio. My audience are here with me, and I welcome all of you. I can't introduce everybody one after the other, so you're all welcome to Youth Express. <laughs> and also, to my immediate left, I have Reverend Justice Aban, who is the founder of Gracious Family Chapel, Reverend Aban. Thank Hello. you so much for Hello. coming Bless today. You. Bless you too. And next to him, I have Mr. Prince Fauma Nyako, who is an entrepreneur and an IT specialist. Mr. Nyako, welcome to our studio. Thank you. How are you feeling today? Ah, by grace, I'm doing so. I, I'm glad that you are good because I want you to start this conversation by telling us a bit about your childhood with your father. Let me say... I didn't really have much encounter with my dad during the childhood days. You know, he was a military man. And, okay. Yeah, mostly not in the country. So I spent most of my days with my mom. Okay. So with my dad, uh, it's only when he came on retirement I got to see him. By then, I had also, yeah. So it was just. So how once, did that one, feel? Once in a while, encounter kind of. But well, just the one or two stories he told me made me understand. Even before I read in the Bible, there was a Red Sea. He had been there. He had told me before I got to read it. Okay. And realized, yeah. So he had been there. He had, yeah. He made me understand some of these things. So, mm. but we really didn't have so much uh, of an encounter. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, he he showed up when I was getting married and all that. It tells that he, you know. He's still there for you, that even though it. he's not yeah, there so, like that every time. Yeah, but he's so, there for you. Uh, okay, <laughs> Reverend Aban, we'd like to hear from you. Wow, Tell us great. a bit about your childhood days. Uh, for me, I had an opportunity to be with my dad, my mom, okay. and my other siblings in the same apartment. And I see him working over hard mm. <laughs> to protect us, shelter, and feed us. And I can see the man wants to cry, but he can't cry. <laughs> so one day, death took him away very early. So I was scared to be a father because of what I saw my father going through to bring us all up. He was doing all his best, but he was in an advantage position to help us. Okay. So I see that, no, then I don't think I would like to be a father. By the end, you became a father. Great. How did that change? Yes, I met my wife, and she started calling me daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and the way she was treating me, the feelings started developing. And before I know, <laughs> I began to love the office of a father. Okay. <laughs> yes. Then finally, I was called into it. <laughs> yeah. You had the calling of a father. Yeah, yes. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I would like to ask you, who is a father, Reverend Aban? That's a very big question. And um, every one of us here will answer it from a different angle. But I will come from this angle. I pray it get understanding of all of us. Um, I see that every man is a father. Okay. That's where I see from where I'm coming from, because the role of a father, some can just be in a day, 
others can be in a month, others can be just a moment, mm -hmm. others can be lifetime. So when you say who is a father, then every man is qualified to be a father. We father people that are not our children. We are there for people that we don't even know. We sometimes fight battles that are not ours. Yes, so it is not only those who have given us the biological children alone that we call them a father. Mm -hmm. I have been currently, uh, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan William is fathering me, and he's not part of my family members, but he is bringing me up very well, nurturing me and shaping me every now and then. So I see the office of a father to be a broad office okay. that you cannot narrow it into the one who gave birth to you okay. because it's too big. We have people who have been abandoned by their fathers, but the Lord, for in own, his own way, replaced a father in that role, to mm. play that role. So you cannot neglect that father. Okay, Mr. Nyako, what's your take on this? It's quite unfortunate. You know, when it gets to Father's Day, you see people limiting it to responsible fathers. But uh, I think that's a wrong sort of notion. Why? To get a better picture, you need to understand what a family is. Okay. Yes, we have family by adoption, by blood, and all that. But whatever the case is, a father comes in. Okay. You, you, you understand the yeah. picture. Whether stepfather, legal father, biological father. So as long as the person is a man, the person qualifies to fulfill or fit, fit for the position of a father. Fatherhood is an office you understand, is, is an office. And uh, you can't just take anybody to sit into an office. The fact that a person is exhibiting uh, qualities that suggest the person can do it doesn't necessarily make the person fit for that position. Okay. So fatherhood is an office. If we see it that way, we won't limit it to responsible fathers. Okay. A fatherhood is an office, and yeah. then you need some qualities to be in that office. What yes. are the qualities that you will need to be in that office, Mr. Nyako? Being a man is enough. Okay. <laughs> Reverend Aban, do you agree? <laughs> yes, I do agree with him. Being a man is enough because I agree with him that it's an office, and sometimes you can be called to the office, you can be pushed into that office, you can find yourself in that office, you can <laughs> obtain that office. <laughs> Yet, of course, my dad died very early then. I'm the first son. And I realized that at a younger age, I was a father. Okay. Because I've been pushed into it. What my dad do, protect the family, provide for the family, then I have to. So at this case, I'm not yet in the age of a father, but I've been pushed into that office. Mm -hmm. So many of us here took care of ourselves. Some of us trained ourselves in school. Someone like me, I trained myself in school which means I was pushed into that role of a father. But I thank God that somebody brought me into the world. So he is my father. He is your father yeah. indeed. Now, I realize that a number of people in the audience have decided to just fold their arms and be quiet. Unfortunately, today you cannot escape. Before you sat, there were pieces of papers on your seat. So I'm going to start with the first four people in front. Yes. Uh, you pick up your paper, read your question to us, and then give us your answer. Mr. Nesta Briskin, please, we'll start with you. What is a saying or a catchphrase that your father likes to use? To say it once may be difficult for me to do okay. because I've had several fathers okay. and all of the fathers in different stages of my lives have had sayings which um, are very, very important. My biological father is deceased and he had a, fa uh, a saying and the saying was Nyamenehene. So he will let me know that in every situation God will come through, for he is the king, and there is no other king. And I've had a father who was my grandfather, and he would tell you that <laughs> the world goes around, and everything will come back to you, so that you are careful of what you are doing now, for it will appear in your future. And he would always say that, Meretito, na menyen wubi. So that, that pushes me into a position where I would disagree with our guests in certain points. Okay. 
as they mentioned that every man is a father, it is a contradictory to a man, a, a, sorry, a father being an office. Because if it is an office, then you would have to have some qualities to be there. So that if you do not have those qualities, you cannot be a father. Mm. So that even though you are a man, you will not qualify to be a father. So that is one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I know they will shed m much light on it. Yeah. And then I've had the spiritual father, uh, my father, Reverend Dr. Ben Coleman, as well as a stepfather who took care of myself and all of my siblings. We were four and he was very young. He was 32 and he was looking after all of us. And his saying was that, I, you do not need to be my biological children before you see me as a father. He said that because I was not seeing him, him as my father. Okay. And then I grew up and I understood his saying. And my spiritual father would also tell me that God is the institution of fatherhood. He started fatherhood. So if I want the best of example of a father, then I have to look up to God and see all of God's qualities as a father. Okay. So these are very quality things and quality sayings I've received from all of these of my fathers and they are shaping my life. My share a memorable story about you and your father. Okay, we're listening. Yeah. So there are many memorable stories that I can share, but there is one that I will never, ever forget. That is how my daddy disciplined me. Okay. Because I was raised up by my mom, so we only spent time with him during occasions, like vacations or during sometimes during Christmas. So the first time he went, he came for us for my mom. Because for many years, I didn't even know my dad until he came around to pick us one day. Okay. So the day that he took us to his new place, where he was staying, he told us, my siblings and I, that there's a river within the vicinity. We should never go there. Because I always knew my daddy to be the pampering type. Because anything that we needed, he would, he would, he would provide. He would yeah. So I didn't, I didn't know that aspect of him. So the following day, he went to the place that he cautioned us not to go. And when he came back, he got to know that we've been there and he disciplined us. By king? With a king, with okay. a man, anything that he could find, he could find. And from there, I, I didn't understand him by then, but as I grew up, I got to know the dangers that was ahead of us for, for, for going to that place. And mm. I love him for that ever since. Wow. And I'm sure he loves you too. Same. But then how do you also discipline your children? By the hand or by word of mouth? We start with the word of mouth. Okay. And when they feel to comply, then the hand has to come in. Okay. <laughs> Just like we also forgot about the office is even yeah, train up the child the way she go so that when he goes he never departs from them. Yes. Yeah. We were also trained and has really shaped our lives. Okay. I would like Reverend Aban to talk a bit about that and then spare the road, spoil the child. Is it in all cases that you don't have to, uh, I, I mean, you, you don't have to spare the road? Is it in all cases? It's in all cases. The more, even, even here in this corporate organization, the moment you neglect them, turn a deaf ear to wrongdoings, before you know, they will bring the whole organization down. We can never and ever compromise that scripture. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Nyako, how do you view this? Spare the road and then spoil the child. A lot of people have not really understood what that road there is. They feel it's limited to only uh, is a corporal punishment. Mm. That is not so. Even speaking to the child yeah. or speaking to the person who is going astray yeah. is the road. Okay. It's not limited to just corporal punishment. You lift a cane. Mm. No. It's, it's more oh, of okay. uh, a sense of direction. Correcting the person from what is not supposed to be done. That is, that is the road. So if you keep quiet today, you keep quiet tomorrow, you keep quiet the next day, before you realize, as he said, it has become a whole institution mm. that yes. you now need a lot of effort to, to clear or to deal with. Okay. But from the onset, once you speak, all children 
uh, let me just bring this one to children. They are all not the same. There are those that would hear. And then the funny thing is, at uh, that, that growing stage, they want to explore. So more like you tell them, don't go here. They want to find out why they shouldn't go there. They're curious. <laughs> yes. Apart from the natural things, God actually has configured into their minds. They are supposed to learn the rest from us. So they come like an empty memory card. It is up to us to put in whatever they need to know. Uh -huh. Put in data. Put in data. Very good. It's up to us to do those uploads. So if we don't really get to realize that that is what we are supposed to do, and then we just watch them to do things, they will upload the wrong files from different sources, mm -hmm. and then it becomes a problem for us to delete. Virus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is, that is how... We're using IT terms. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is how they were made. Okay. Uh -huh. So, you know, correcting them is, 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 should not be limited to the corporal punishment. Okay. But unfortunately, that is where they don't like us. Hmm. The fact that you correct, mommy will pamper, but daddy won't pamper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it makes them to know mommy is a good old man, daddy is a bad man. <laughs> yes, I, I, I experienced some recently, and my boy in the secondary school don't call me, but he called the mother. We took him to secondary school, and um, he came home and told the mother, I didn't eat the food at the dining, and they were celebrating it. So I took a uh, decision that when he's going next, I will drive him there. Mm -hmm. So when I drove him there, I reduced all his provisions <laughs> so that he will adjust himself to the dining food. So that happened. And when my wife visited the boy in school, he has tend to be like a one. <laughs> like so when he came back from school, he told the junior one, anytime you see food, it's an opportunity. <laughs> Good. Uh, so even though he wasn't happy with me and it's in his memory that now if he called daddy the, the case is going to be but I am also correcting him because all of us here have been there before mm -hmm. and we all know so we don't have to lie to him it's an experience he has to pass through it's a must place he should pass but father is enforcing mommy is pampering I know some of us our parents hire people to stay close to our school to cook for us and we might think, oh, mommy is a good person, but daddy is enforcing and directing as well. For that reason, if you ask my son right now, you tell him, oh, for my mom, love you for my dad, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Reverend Evan, thank you. Now, the third person, please, let's hear your question. Okay, thank you. My question is, what is the best piece of advice you have ever received from your father? My dad gave us so many advice growing up. When I say my dad, I mean my stepfather, because I stayed with my stepdad. That's why I agree with them to some extent. My dad is first. Considering father. Yeah, and some of this advice came when myself and my twin brother were behaving um, weird. We weren't being, we weren't, uh, being responsible kids then. That was around GHS coming up. And he said to us, you guys are behaving as if your age is stagnant. Don't you know that you're growing each day? Which means that he was telling us that as the day goes by, we grow. So we should make sure our attitude, actions, and our mind also grow okay. so that we react towards that. So that was one of the advice, and it really stuck in my head. Then... Coming, f uh, someone coming from the Western region, is more precisely, one of the brothers mostly tell us that as you're going and living in this vicinity, remember where you're coming from. Because sometimes you have to allow your past and your, your location to influence your attitude as you move ahead. He also says that, so far as I would say he's also um, struggling or striving to make sure he brings food to the table, help you pay your school fees and everything, you know that there will be a time that he wouldn't be there to play that role, especially for the younger ones. So as so you're moving ahead, know that there will be a time to also be a father. In his absence, though you may not have given birth, but you mm -hmm. also be a father to take care of your younger siblings. Basically, that's the little thing I would say about my dad when it comes to advice. Yeah.
if you could thank your father for one thing, what would it be? I'm someone who was raised by uh, three to four fathers. Hmm. And I am where I am. If it's only one father, I can't get where I am today. So um, I want to thank my biological father for raising me in a godly way. In the sense that, although he wasn't having everything, he always told me, like, you need to go to church. You have to be in church every Sunday. You have to know the word of God. So it's really, growing up, it really helped me a lot. And I want to thank him for doing that. Without him, like, I'll be, I'll be part of the work. And the second one is also to the other father for giving me hope for the future. I thought coming out from a bad, a bad background will end it all. That means I'll not get to where I want to get to. But someone gave, gave me hope, which I really appreciate for everything he has done. That's Dr. Stephen Akafu. Okay, yeah. I'm sure Dr. Stephen wants to hear you better, so please. Yeah, so Dr. Stephen Akafu, right. uh, an eye specialist. Okay. Yeah. So he, he, he eventually gave me hope. That's the family and everyone. So I'm very grateful for giving me hope. And also to also Joseph Nyai Tegu. They, all those people made a great impact on my life. Without them, I won't be where I am today. As a father, yes. you are also human, yes. and I'm sure you have your flaws. Yes. You have uh, some of your flaws, your kids will notice, some they will not notice. Yeah. But then, in all of these things, how do you manage to maintain a positive role or be a positive role model for your children? Oh, great. See, wherever you grew up from and the environment you find yourself, the environment have a way of bringing some characters into you. The moment you become a father, then you have to work very hard to deal with it. Because one time I was praying with someone and he said something that, man of God, pray for me. And I said, when I was praying for him, he said, let your children be like you. He said, no, <laughs> no, don't let them be like me. Please, that prayer, Treat that prayer. Then I realized, oh, okay, we are fathers, but we don't want our kids to be like us. We have a lot that we battle in our personal lives that we wouldn't love our kids. Anyone that smoke will not let his kids like to smoke. Anyone that take alcohol will not like his kids to take alcohol. Mm. So sometimes they will even do it in the hidden. But the truth of the matter is that your children or our children is a continuation of us. It's a marathon. So if we want them to behave well, we have to change. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of challenges because I grew up in a place called Ethiopia Takrade. That's where I grew up from, where we only survived by entering a ship or becoming a rapper. So we, we know that it is the street life. It isn't, okay. it isn't any other thing, it's a street life. You can just understand where we are coming from. So you have to deal with it because kids are watching you and we are the first remodel of our kids. And a kid says, I want to be like my father. I want to be like my father. And you ask yourself, do I well teach? So you just have to give yourself a personal discipline and start practicing good life practice. Day. To every man where they fight for their responsibility. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to every man where they fight for their responsibility. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to every man where they fight for their
Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day. Welcome back from the short break. You're still watching Youth Express, the voice of the youth, and we're still celebrating fatherhood. Now, before the break, I wanted Mr. Nyaku to speak a bit about how fathers can be a positive role model for their children. Mr. Nyaku. Let me use my, for instance, personally, you know, growing up without experiencing the uh, biological affection from the biological father is actually something when I was getting married, I prayed so much about. You know, marriage comes with fatherhood. Yes, and so now there is no example for me to follow. Okay. I had to chart my course. So I had to pray so much so God will grant me the strength. With my, my boy at the moment, what, we usually, what usually happens is when the mother beats him, he will come to me for, for consolation. When I beat him, he won't go to the mother. He will still come to me. <laughs> <laughs> that is the sort of bond we have formed now. When I'm not at home, he can play with anybody in the house. Once I come, he won't mind anybody again. It's only me. And so far, it's been so good. I have some twins now. So when you say we're twins, yes, they are like seven months and it's amazing how when they eat and they are full, all you hear them say is either papa or dada. And no, mama. Mama will be like, ah, what is wrong? <laughs> you see, when I come home, what I do with them, you know, they are so young. So all we can do is just have fun. So they see me and they think, oh, the comedian has come. They are coming to laugh. Uh -huh. At that point, that is where I started my bonding. So when they are full, all the papa... Mama, you just hear them. Sometimes I try to record. Once they see the phone, they stop. Uh -huh. So that has been the sort of bonding I've had with them. And so far, with the first boy, when he sees me beside, behind the PC all the time, so he tries to understand what I'm doing. And I like his curiosity. Mm -hmm. And I feel, you know, when your children are trying to uh, emulate what you do, especially at home. At this time, they only learn by observation. Allow them. For all you know, they could even open you up to something you never knew. Though you have experience in your field, but you never realized there was something like that you had not even seen. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Nyako. Now we're going to continue. Please, this is Mr. Charles Chakpo. He is the head of design here at GBC. Please, let's welcome him to the studio. He has, he has the next question. So, Mr. Chakpo, let's hear your question. Well, the question I have here is, what qualities do you believe makes one a great father? And for me, I will use an acronym, which I describe as uh, the HPSMS approach, where the H is headship. If you are a father and you don't understand headship, and the ultimate person that should strengthen you to be the headship is the almighty God. And because everything is structured there. The manual that will guide you to understand the headship of a family as a father is in the Bible. So I really want us to take that into consideration. The next one is the P. If you are a father and you don't understand what is meant by provision, providing, then forget about it. You are the ultimate. Though the lady or your wife is there, to once in a while come in to support, but see yourself as the ultimate provider. When your wife's own comes in for the children, then that is a plus. And then the S is sacrifice. Sacrifice, you should be the number one person to see yourself sacrificing for the family. Sacrifice so much, sometimes you go to work and come in. All the money you have is what can provide for food. And Transportation cannot be taken from what will be provided for the food. Provide the food and find a way of even working or getting a possible means of getting to work. It means you are sacrificing for them. Yeah. And then the fourth one is multitasking. If you are a father, to the best of my knowledge, as one of the greatest quality is to understand multitasking in that you should be the person who understands how to enter the kitchen, prepare food. When your electrical gadget gets spoiled, you should be able to. When you come to my house, I have my screwdrivers, spanners, hammer. I do all sorts of things at home. 
And then the last but not the least is security, which is the S. The security, you should be the last person to go to bed. And you should also be the last person to ensure that everybody goes to bed. In that, if even you hear a noise, a single noise, be it a robbery attack or something, or just a little noise on the roofing, you should be the first person to be up. Be armed in that way. And you are able to do that, honestly. That is the five key things from my experience, fathering four children, and being able to apply all these five principles. They've all, always described me as a great father. That is why I'm trying to share it here. So it's the HP SMS approach. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. Shepo. Okay, so our next person, he wants to share an experience with us. Personally, I didn't grow up with my father, but rather my mother. But later, when I found out that, uh, you know, the marriage broke when I was very young. So later, I had to find out where my father is. But I couldn't see that, uh, the challenges that took place. But rather, I keep on visiting my father until later I realized that uh, there is something between the two of them while the marriage got broken. But one thing that my father always keep on telling me that I should learn how to forgive, for example. And uh, as I'm talking to you right now, my father is gone. But I always thank God that that particular advice he gave me, uh, it is enough for me. Now, to share my experience as a father, uh, I can boldly tell you that I'm a role model to my children just for one thing, because I cook for them. Okay. Yes. The reason is I didn't see that uh, being a father, I should leave everything for my wife to cook or to wash or to clean up at, at home. I do those things just to help her. And because of that, my children see me that I'm a role model to them. And because of that, uh, they see the responsibilities too that I do. For example, paying their fees, making sure that they are schooling, everything is in order. One thing I have come to understand, uh, experience, this from experience, is that responsibilities to children is never defined anywhere. To your wife, you are not a father. You are a husband. To your children, you are not a husband. You are a father. So your responsibilities to your children goes beyond anything. There is None of them is defined that this one is for the mother, this one is for the father. It's all play or Once you are capable, just let it go. Don't shift some to mothers and it's all play or Thank let's, you very much. I think he's doing, he's doing really great because for somebody who didn't experience your father that much, you're making sure that you're always there for their children, please let's appreciate each of us. Okay, so Lawrence, please, you're next. Please be on your feet and tell us your question and okay, briefly so answer. My question is if you are given the chance, what is one thing you would like to do with your father? Okay. So, um, if I'm given the chance now, the only thing that I would like to do with my dad is spend time with him. Okay. So, spend some time because I remember. Uh, my dad is a workaholic, meaning he works Monday to Sunday. Uh -huh. The only time that we used to see my type. him, <laughs> the only time we used to see him is Sunday morning. That means on Sunday mornings, he goes to work late. So if I'm giving the opportunity right now and the chance, I, I think that he's so there and so working, goes to work on Sundays, but to, I mean, have a chance with him, sit down, and then share more. Because okay. I believe that it's because of the responsibility of taking care of us, that's why he's away. Mm. But then if there's any chance for us to have a one or one chat, I think there is more that you would like to tell us. And okay. I wouldn't like that to go away. Mm. I'm sure Daddy is hearing you. He will spend more time with you. Thank you very much. The question that I had was share a joke or a story that your father or any father figured in your life has shared with you before. My father had a lot of jokes. But one thing I want to share, one joke that I want to share was a joke that he shared with me, but at the end, I never laughed. <laughs> Let's hear the joke. 
Um, if it is to be permitted, I will speak it in the Chi language no so that it becomes very clear for us. <laughs> okay. You see, one day I was with him and uh, he started narrating the story of what his father, following his father to the farm. And uh, what he told me is that he was following his father one day and was having a catapult. Uh, yeah, um, tie. So in the course of uh, following the father, he saw uh, an atu, a bed, that mm -hmm. small bed we call atu. Asrewa. Asrewa. That is how we call it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Until mm -hmm. atu, uh, atu, as the guns will call it. Mm -hmm. And then he picked the stone of our boar and all the share, tie And then he pulled it or trimmed to the chest level. All that time, I was just listening and looking at the face, wanting to know what he was going to see. And the stone and the sound that he made was. And then, then the ato all the way from the top with the full sound and the speed. Who did sing on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> then he told me he went, and when he got there, the ato was on the floor. So I began, to, I began thinking, ah, this ato, very little ato, small bed. Pick the stone, look at the sound of the stone. This stone hits the ato. The ato came with a full sound onto the ground, grind like that. And then when he got there, he saw the two lying down. So I never laughed. And I was just looking at and imagining how the story was. But you see, I realized and got to know later on that, you see, he was making me to think. He was trying to put me in a thinking manner. Well, wondering how I told this small will fall <laughs> on the ground with, us, with that yeah. loud sound <laughs> you see and i really appreciated what him from that day onwards my thinking capacity got grew up so much <laughs> and that is one thing i loved from my father if every man is a father and not that every man can be a father and fatherhood is also an office, then it is a contradictory in the sense that if it is an office, then it is restricted to those who qualify for the office. So if that is the case, I would want you to first deal with that contradictory. And then also, if it is an office, then could it be that a woman can also be a father? since it is an office. Thank you very much. So let me uh, first establish uh, uh, when I mentioned earlier, said fatherhood is an office. And uh, it is not an office that just anybody can occupy. And so being a man is enough. It is not fatherhood role, it is not a role a woman can play. Okay. No matter how hard she will try to do what the man is not available to do, she still can't occupy that office. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Reverend yes. Aban, we'd like to hear from thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, what you are saying, we do understand that we earlier said um, fatherhood is an office, and mm -hmm. I still stand by that. Someone can take care of my office for me as a father interim. Mm. I have father a lot of people, which I don't even know them. I don't even know their fathers. And possibly maybe I might not be able to give birth to them. But I have been in that office for their father, even if I've not given birth before. And I'm sure many of us here have done so. I once got myself in a family where there were only women in the family and a snake came out from the family from the room and they started shouting <laughs> 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 
They were all elderly <laughs> people, strong people, but they were all looking for a particular person. Even though they are women, even though they are strong, they were rather looking for man. As I have as I said earlier, that fatherhood, that office gives security. Exactly. Of course. Number one thing that you think of for your kids is their security. So if someone provides me security for a day, he has fathered me for that day. Mm -hmm. And of course, he won't say he fathered me on the streets. No. The moment he has the hearts to provide security for even a group of people at that moment, he has fathered all of us at that okay. moment. That is why I said earlier that it's an office and you can be called into it, you can be pushed into it yeah, because it's an office. And that office, if you come by qualification, then some will be disqualified. But you can be pushed into it because at that moment, you are the only one that can make some people mm. survive. Wow. Uh -huh. That is why I say it's an office. But when it comes to qualification, then a lot will be disqualified. But you can be pushed into that office for or, or pain or found yourself in, in that, that office. office. Thank you Thank very you. much, Reverend Aban. Thank you so much. One will just impregnate somebody. Yes. The person will be somewhere yes. else. The person is a man. Yes. And then you still call the person a father. Great. Because okay. you had mentioned that every man is. Great. So that is the Great. Aspect. Yes, okay. that aspect. And when we come biblically in the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8, it's the listening to the instruction of your father. They didn't put it there that listen to the instruction of the responsible fathers. We all have fathers who don't like them. All. We all have been with our fathers. For me, my father was having a behavior I never like. Whenever they call for PTA, I'm crying because when my dad comes there, things that will happen, I wouldn't like it. But I have to respect the office and also know that the person is different from the office. He is my father occupying that office and I need to honor whether we like it or not, if there's a president on the seat, whether you like him or not, he is the president. That office, we have to honor that office. We have some fathers who have abandoned their children. But you'll be surprised that the same father are fathering others' children. Thank you. If someone has impregnated someone and left, sir, the conditions that they left, if they tell you, you might even sympathize with them. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Reverend Aban. So <laughs> My question is, how does your father react when he sees you do something silly or bad? That's the question. It's quite unfortunate. I never had a, a father since my childhood. Yes. Uh, not that, how should I put it? My father neglected us and went for another woman. So I was stay with my grandmother mm -hmm. before later my mom came for me, live with my stepdad. And my stepdad happened to be um, a hunter and a photographer. Those days, when he goes for trek, sometimes a whole month, he may not be back. That is why I disagree with the definition of father uh, Reverend and Mr. Nyaku gave because I disagree with them completely. Um, to be a father goes a long way. And for me as a father, now I can say I'm a father for about nine children. Yes, I father about nine children. And when I tell you some of the responsibilities, I happen to grow up in the agrarian and rural community where children are used to perform this kind of tedious work, like okay. slavery and uh, child labor and stuff. Um, it's difficult to even get out of those situations. So if you happen to find yourself in such communities, how do you come out if you don't have a responsible father to take care of you? Whereby you're always instructed to go to the farm. Meanwhile, you are not having such capabilities to even hold the catalyst or a home to wait a portion that has been allocated for you. Um, we have a man and we have a father. Okay. Not every man is qualified to be a father. When God made you my father, he knew When he picked you from the others, he could already see that you would be my hero and everything I wanna. My 
dad, um, Ebenezer Visiku Asari, uh, happy Father's Day to you. For how far you brought us, if God bless you. My dad deserves a standing ovation, that's how standing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, growing up, I was with my mom, and uh, my mom was also contributing a lot. So as time went on, my mom felt sick, seriously, and she passed on. And at that time, we were, we were five boys. So the pressure was serious. And at that time, too, I was, I was in um, SHS, too. So my dad, after the funeral, my dad called us and said, hey, nobody is going to be dropped out from school. I'm going to make sure everybody secure whatever he wants to do and then become responsible. So my other brother told, he asked my dad, so how are you going to do that? We are in our final year and it's a whole lot of pressure. He said, I'm going to do as I am saying. So with that, I saw that my dad did well. He delivered everything that he said. He did well. And then God being so good, my two brothers, they completed and then the other two too has completed and also me too. So I think Fathering is, is not easy, but my dad did his best to bring us this far. And to other father that I have, um, is the fool. Um, he's at my church. Even my presence here is through that man's advice. Mm -hmm. So I would thank Mr. Fung very much for his advice being here. What makes you see your father as a superhero? Okay. So my dad is an inspiration to me. I've been watching him since I was little and I've seen that he's doing a great work in my life. Going to work day in and day out, providing for the family, foodstuffs, even cooking for us. Though we grew up and we cook, but he had to take care of those stuff and all that. And it was really an inspiration to me. I wanted to learn a lot from him because he's also a pastor. He prays and all that. So I've been learning from him. And that made me know that there's more for me to learn and also become a better person like him. Okay. Yes. Thank That's you very much. So please wish, wish your father like to wish. I'd like to wish my father, uh, Mr. Peter Graffi, a happy Father's Day, and my older brother, who fathered me before my father overcame me. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kelvin, and today's a special day. I just want to say a glorious Father's Day to my father, Mr. Ebenezer Bedu, and also a happy Father's Day to my papa, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Have a blessed day, papa. A happy Father's Day to my own father, Reverend AJ of Mount Sinai Congregation, New Botiana. Papa, we love you. Thank you for all the sacrifice you have made the lessons you have taught and the great memories we have shared. I want to wish all fathers across the globe a happy Father's Day, especially my late father, Apostle Robert Snapwaji Dakon of blessed memory. I also want to wish my chairman, the current chairman of Revival Outreach Church, a happy Father's Day, Professor Abednego Oko Amate. God richly bless you, Daddy. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to every man where they do everything for the family. Yeah. Who say man no day? So who say man no day? See, if man no day, if poppy no day, then wait till we gain. If man no day, if man no day, me then you no go day. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to every man where they fight for their responsibility. Okay, I would like to uh, wish my own dad a happy Father's Day with in the person of Bride Kwabna uh, Buafu. Happy Father's Day and Mara Tua and Gosua also doing well. 
even though maybe like they are they are not in the uh, better position to like uh, cater for me but one way or the other they have been good to me okay. you know, like sometimes they even call me and be like oh Morris, do you need anything like when i don't even ask it so i like i would like to also thank them for that opportunity and okay. wish them a happy father's day okay. like, who is the person of brapa kuana well i also like to wish my father daniel omare asumi a happy father's day and then all other fathers that have taken care of me also um happy father's day okay i would like to wish my father biologically Kabana for uh, happy Father's Day and then we appreciate him for all his sacrifices since childhood. And secondly to my father in the Lord, um, Prophet Powerman Bekwin, who is the founder of the Gospel Church, Taifa Bokina. I also wish him happy Father's Day. Yeah. Reverend Moses Oblejuman, happy Father's Day. Uh, Reverend James Delago, and also my reverend here, Justice Avan, because he fathers many children. Happy Father's Day. Okay. I would like to wish a special Happy Father's Day to the father of my community. He is the person of Nene Dr. Tejahini Korabo IV. He is the chief of Manya Jokwanya. And then also the father of GBC where I work, Professor Amin Alassan, who has made a lot of transformation in GBC, and also not forgetting the father who has been fathering me for some time now, though my biological father is not there, in the person of Shiloh Doche Manu, the family head of Doche Manu, and also Toby Kumi, the family head of Chakbo family. I wish all of them happy Father's Day. Thank you. And to you, Mr. Charles Chapo, happy Father's Day. Thank you very much. Oh, much thank you. <laughs> I'd like to say a big happy Father's Day to my biological father, Reverend Daniel Tegu, and our social fathers as well, Dr. Stephen Akafu, Dr. Baidin. I would like to um, wish all fathers in CSIR Water Research, Dr. Santi Sedani, the Chemistry Division, um, Reverend Inokabna Nuwal, House of Mercy, as well as of God, Oyarifa, um, Mr. Godfrey, and I also like to say a special Happy Father's Day to my dad, my stepdad, I mean, um, Mr. Ewin Hawaja, New Kabbalah Suazo, half as me area. God bless you so much for your duties in my life. I appreciate you. To my dad, Nana Kwejo Dakwa, who is of blessed memory, and to my spiritual father, Reverend Dr. Ben Coleman, who stepped in and has been playing an excellent role in my life. To my landlord, Stephen Asari. To my brother, who is also like a father to me, Mr. Bruce Nanakin. And to myself, happy Father's Day to myself. Happy Thank Father's you. Day to you. I'd like to wish a happy Father's Day to the ultimate father of all of us, that is God. <laughs> and I, I also do to Reverend Dr. Ben Coleman of the Jesus Cabot Ministries. Um, Father, thank you so much for all the stress I put you through and my stubbornness. Uh, <laughs> I thank you for shaping myself and my brother's lives for us to become better um, examples of God. Thank you for you being an example unto us. I, I also say Happy Father's Day to my brother, um, Mr. Dakwa, as well, and to myself as well. And every struggling father out there, I know that God has got your back. You will sail through. Thank you. And thank you to now to our panelists, Reverend Aban. Who would you like to wish? Wow. I would like to wish my father, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, Happy Father's Day for all the great works you have been doing in our life and DTS. God bless you, Papa. And I also would like to wish a happy Father's Day to His Excellency Nana Akufu Adu. The Lord bless you for fathering Ghana. God bless you. Bless you too. And Mr. Nyako, who would you like to wish? I wish uh, Reverend Dr. George Asante, uh, CAC. He's such a wonderful man. And, and then uh, 
Mr. World 34, he's with Jean Harry. He's such a wonderful person. And Elder uh, Techi Menu, Church of Pentecostal, New Abraham. Yeah, he's also a very wonderful, wonderful father. So Thank we're you. far behind time, but before we go, I have a tall list of people that I have to wish a happy Father's Day. My own father, Reverend Benjamin Anum of Christ Apostolic Church. Happy Father's Day to you, Daddy, and we love you. And from the Women, Youth and Children section of GTV, Happy Father's Day to Dr. Kweku Ofosu Asare. And from Mrs. Esther Ejay, video editor of GTV, to Mr. Ejay of GBC Koforidua, Happy Father's Day. From the head of section of Women, Youth and Children, Mrs. Na Abele Ofosu Asare, to her father, Mr. Robert Abe, alias Atajakwe of Medina, Happy Father's Day. And from Ms. Kukwa Ankabedin, our very own producer of GVC, uh, to her dad, Mr. J.K. Ankabedin of New Atimota Chantain, Happy Father's Day. And to Director General of GBC, Mr. Happy Father's Day. To our studio managers, Mr. Robert Stoff, Mr. Steven Amponsa, Mr. Enes Achina, and Mr. Hayford Kojo, and to all our male studio technicians, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to every father watching us at this moment and to every father in the studio. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Oh, too soon. We have come to the end of our discussion about fatherhood, about the joys, the challenges, and every memory that comes with being a father. And the people who helped us, I have Reverend Justice Aban, who is the founder of Gracious Family Chapel. Reverend Aban, thank you so much for bless gracing you. us with your presence. God bless you. He keeps saying bless you and bless you too. <laughs> <laughs> That's the mark of a reverend. And also, Mr. Prince Fauma Nyako, who is an entrepreneur and IT specialist. Thank you so much, Mr. Nyako, for coming. I'm grateful for having And thank you. you for your data that you input into the system. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to you, our lovely viewers, for joining us this afternoon on Youth Express, the voice of the youth on GTV. My name is Paula Benji, and I hope to see you same time next week.